Hey guys, and welcome back to Nomi Factory. Last episode, we expanded our Draconic Evolution Fusion Crafting and got some passive processes set up for these things. We also once again added to the fluid solidifiers, the single block machines, and the processing arrays. We moved over some of the inner IO machines and completely passive the tier 7 microminers here. Oh yeah, and how can we forget the simulation supercomputer? This thing is crazy. <laughs> We're already up to 1800 dragon pristines. But yeah, I just got done cleaning up the little reactor spill that we had last episode. Still not sure exactly what happened there. Alright, anyway, so what is going to be our goal for today? I think that we should try to rush our second creative item. And that is going to come in the form of the creative RF source. You know, it didn't look too bad to begin with until I clicked on this, and we need four of these things. <laughs> so yeah, this is going to keep us extremely busy. I think the best place to start here is to just encode all of, all of the recipes first. Let's grab all of our recipe package holders out of the ultimate crafting tables. I mean, it's not like we have to encode it to all of these things. We're not going to be <laughs> making multiple of these creative RFs, but you know. Yeah, so we want to select the ultimate table, encode this recipe, encode the ultimate generator recipe also. I think we'll need the infinity catalyst recipe. We don't have this either. Oh yeah, that is definitely a craft. And when we try to request this thing, I don't even want to look at this, to be honest. Okay, <laughs> let's start pinning stuff. Fusion reactors. Okay, this doesn't look too bad until we get to the bottom of the list. Yeah, all of the generators. 32 eternal catalysts. One heart of the universe. 208 chaos shards. <laughs> yeah, so we have to craft all of this up here. This might end up being a long episode for me again. But to be honest with you, I think we've got most of the infrastructure already in place here in our base. Let's see if we can just start by encoding all of the easy stuff. Like, for example, the steam turbine. This should be very easy just to add recipes for. Oh, and there were a lot of recipes. As soon as you put in one, you get 10 more to encode. So that was a lot of fun. A lot of clicks. <laughs> brewing stands? Why, why do we need brewing stands? I assume this is for one of the generators somewhere. Tin and bronze rotors. Surprised we didn't have those already. Apparently we're also short obsidian. I'm not sure exactly where all of the obsidian is going, but I think we should just add a process array for this. Wait, chicken, where are you going? Where are you going? <laughs> no. Oh, goodbye. Wait, maybe we can save him. Let's save him. I don't know what Y level we're at here. We're still at 50. <laughs> Look at him. I can't grab him. Okay, okay I got him. I got him. <laughs> it's a very love-hate relationship with these guys. He's going to go next to these buddies in here, though. Yeah, so I am making my way through the list. However, these 208 Chaos Shards that we need is going to take a while. So I think we should get at least some of these Tier 7s sent. We do have these auto-crafted by now, so we should be able to send a decent chunk of these at once. So we need the Tier 7s for the layer of the Chaos Guardian data to launch the Tier 8s to get the Chaos Shards. So that also means we have to get Tier 8s, which are still not on passive. That might be something we get around to today. Let's just craft 10 of them to begin with, though. We're also short bricks, which have to be made apparently in an alloy smelter. Aha, there is also high power ICs which we didn't set up again after we took them down from the old platform. These are the things that come from Indium Gallium Phosphide. Luckily, Indium Gallium Phosphide itself is fluid solidifiable, if that's even a word. <laughs> so we just need a couple of chemical reactors to make it into the high power ICs. And maybe a laser engraver or two. Alright, so here it is, Creative RF Source. No, I'm joking, we don't have Creative RF. <laughs> here is basically the situation. We are missing somewhere in the region of 40 Chaos Shards? No, 100 Chaos, we have 44 Chaos Shards. One more Heart of the Universe, 40 Potatoes and 40 Pink Dye. Alright, so I think what we do here is farm up a bunch of potatoes and insulators. I mean, we probably could have just bought these things. But we can also farm some Beetroot. And Beetroot, I think we can turn it into Red Dye. Craft us with some Bone Meal and we get our Pink Dye here. Yeah, there's almost two stacks, that's plenty. Out of all the crazy materials and we're out of potatoes, that's that's kind of funny. <laughs> but yeah, what are we going to do about all these chaos shards? It's it's so many chaos shards. I think what we do here is actually passive tier 8. We need to keep sending these things. Yeah, another 10. And I think it's also about time that we start to hook up these microverse projectors, the large ones. And maybe we also get around to the tier 2 missions, which is going to go in these other two small ones. The rest of the microminers at this point really shouldn't be too much of an issue now that we have the basic ones and the most difficult one, the tier 7. Alright, so the first thing we'll need is the Iridium Heavy Platons. We can add this into a processing array, I think we've got ZPM machines on this job. And I did actually add a second level to these things, we've got them all wired up, ready to receive their inputs. Next thing for the tier 8s is the warp cores. This is just going to be made with blocks of lumium. 
blocks of titanium and blocks of nether stars. All things we can fluid solidify. And we can set the crafting recipe here. Oh, and we got an advancement. Not that we're going to use these things for their intended purpose though. Next up, uh, we need machine blocks, which means we also need black quartz. We have an electrolyzer somewhere doing quartzite to black crush black quartz. We just need an autoclave to mix this with some water. And this should turn it into the gems for us. Mix the gems with some steel plates and we got the machine blocks. And craft those with some stainless steel plates which we had to fluid solidify. And this will give us our machine structures. Oh, oh that's right, we also need stone burnt. This can only be made in a resonator. I think we're making polished stone already though, right? Yes, we have polished stone, we just need a resonator for this step. But this is going to go where exactly? Here is the answer. <laughs> there, right there. Alright, there is our stone burnt. We need to use this to make our screens, along with some resonating redstone crystals. I think we have these already in one of the processing arrays. Yeah, then we can take tier 4 circuits, EV sensors, the machine structures and the screens. And we are now auto-crafting the warp controllers. Perfect time for the rain. We can also add the HV field generator. HV machine casings. HV machine hulls, which are technically more efficient in the assembler, but not by much, and we can fluid solidify all this stuff here anyway. And we can use these along with the HV field generators for the advanced quantum chests. Maybe let's just downgrade this drawer, there's no reason to keep 2000 quantum chests. Okay, unfortunately I think that's all the easy stuff out of the way now. I believe for tier 8 the only thing we're missing is the ZPM field generators. And this is another assembly line recipe, but first we need the ZPM emitter, which is another assembly line recipe. And the LUV emitter actually. Do we make this? Yes, we make the LUV emitter. It looks like we're not making it right now for whatever reason. Apparently we're out of electrum foil. Okay, first of all let's configure the assembly lines and we can see what else we're missing for this process. Okay, three input buses full of platinum foil, four X vanadium gallium cable, tier three circuits. No wait, not tier three, tier five circuits. They're both blue, that's why I got confused here. EV and IV emitters, which we have a capped buffer of. That is a good sign. HSSE frames, we also have a capped buffer on this. And finally, the LUV emitters, which we have to fix here, but those will eventually go in the, in the last input bus here. Plug it all in. And that should be the ZPM emitter. Let's also configure the field generator of this. I think we're missing end of stars and an aquatic cable, probably. Yeah, this one is six inputs of fine osmium wire, awakened draconian plates, an aquatic cable we don't have, the ZPM emitters we haven't crafted yet, tritanium frames we apparently also don't have, we need an assembler for this, and also end of stars, which is just a crafting recipe. All right, let me go and set some fillers and I'll be right back. Alright, so it's taken me almost an hour and a half, but I do have all of these things filtered now. So I took care of the input items, some of which are still going to be bottlenecks for us, but I mainly just spent the time here setting all these level emitters. A lot of these crafts takes things like the wetware circuits, and also tier 4 circuits. I wanted to make sure we leave some, because these are used all over the place as well for other, other processes around the base. I also added two more for neural processing units, so we have two on the last ones and two on the first. These are basically the gate for everything else on these assembly lines here. And the reason this isn't running, it's actually disabled right now, is because we don't have enough wetwares. The circuit boards and also the circuits, so I don't really know what we're going to do about that. They're already in processing arrays. I also was messing about with the pulsating polymer clay setup. The way we had it before was the outputs were going into these drawers and also being split amongst the inputs of the next PA. However, now I came up with this little storage stack here. So the output boss of the PA goes straight into a compacting drawer, or whatever drawer the output item will accept. Then it's actually taken by a LUV conveyor into a buffer chest, and then output to the interface that way, and then sent to the next PA. So having the drawer here means that we do buffer excess of the material, but it's all prioritized to the next PA in order to make pulsating polymer clay. However, the reason we have the chest here is to have the fast conveyor item transfer. It's basically just acting as a conduit to send the items into the interface. I realized it was kind of broken when I went to request dust, as I was using dust to make netherrack in order to get blaze powder, 
We can actually do this with Netherrack Dust and Elemental Reduction Fluid, and the way we were getting this before was with Blaze DML. This is a much more renewable way to get Blaze Powder, and we go through a lot of this stuff. In fact, most of it is going for these Eyes of Ender, which appear not to be able to keep up in this chemical reactor, so that's probably going to get a PA somewhere. Everything can be fixed with the process, Nuri. But yeah, since we're not quite out of Creative RF yet, I'm going to add another one of these towers. I hope it doesn't take me as long as the first time. But yeah, we've got some time to kill, so to say, so we may as well spend it productively. We need more wyvern cores anyway. How on earth did you manage to get up there? <laughs> so yeah, I've been busy here grinding this out, placing so many conduits again. <laughs> And I actually managed to get two more chunks of fusion crafting set up. One more stack for wyvern cores, which we're still not actually buffering excess of. One thing I'm not sure about though is, does fusion injector tier affect the crafting speed? Let me know about that, we may end up upgrading those injectors if that's the case. But yeah, over this side I did actually manage to move over the on-demand setups that we had down at the old cobble platform. Anyway, I think that's enough fusion for today, I, I want to move on to these microverse projectors. Ideally, we want to be able to take down these microverse projectors that we've been leaving up on the cobble platform. These things have been really annoying me, especially that one on the end. I don't even think this has a cobble platform underneath it. No, this thing is floating. So we need to add the functionality back into our new part of the base. All of these things we still have to give power, so we'll put a CEF. Wait, check the energy input hatch. Yeah, it's all UV. We'll run all of these things at UV at least. You get a CEF, and you get a CEF. You don't get a CEF, but you get a CEF. Okay, so they all have power now. We have to supply them with the inputs for the Microverse projections. So this first one here is going to be for Tier 7. There's two Tier 7 missions, both of which we actually need. We need this for Dragon Hearts. But the main one is going to be Layer of the Chaos Guardian data. And to run this mission, we need four stacks of Dragon Layer data. This comes from Pristine Ender Dragon Matter, which is the, exactly the reason we have this running in the supercomputer. In fact, we're now up to 24,000 Pristines. Wow. <laughs> and yeah, I did add some loot fabricators down here for those. Wait, that's not the right storage monitor. It should be this on the storage monitor. Yeah, we're 18,000 dragon layer data, which is good. So the layer data will go into the interface along with gemstone sensors, two stacks of dilithium crystals, of which we have 65,000, which is awesome. And of course the tier seven microminer, which we're actually not producing anymore. And I think that's because of neural processing units and wetwares. We're gonna, we're gonna definitely have to upgrade those. Anyways, I think because we're sending multiple items into this input bus, we'll have to do the little robot arm trick on this. So we point the input bus away, put on the robot arm, set the filter to supply exact. No, keep exact. And we want enough to be able to send this mission here. Oh, apparently you can't do multiple stacks in the same slot. I think you have to increase it to 128 manually. That's something I didn't know. But this, I think, works, right? Yeah, reform the multi-block and it should run the recipe right now. Perfect. So we should see our dragon layer data on the output bus. Amazing. This, we don't need to store in a drawer, we're just going to send this back to our AE system. However, we don't just want to use all of the tier 7 missions for this one for the dragon layer. We also want to have a level emitter on the bottom side of this controller. And this will only run if we have greater than 300 dragon hearts. Maybe 300 is too low, but we need dragon hearts for the ultimate material. And this is used in eternal catalysts, used in the infinity ingots and so on. And the dragon hearts we get from the alternate tier 7 mission. We have to hook this up somehow, how are we going to do that? <laughs> I don't think we have a connection under here, do we? Not nearby, I think we have to run one over. But yeah, we also need the ability to send the mission for the Dragon Hearts, so I think we're going to have our same little export boss level emitter trick. The same sort of spaghetti mess that we used in this original projection, only hopefully it won't be as spaghetti as we have it here. Yeah, that's significantly less spaghetti. <laughs> that's much better. Alright, so let me hook up the rest of these projectors. The tier 8, 9 and 10 is all going to be on demand. There's no need to automatically send those missions. Oh, wait a second. I don't know if you guys spotted this, but yeah. <laughs> this setup here isn't going to work because this level emitter stops this from running when we have less than 300 hearts. And if we request the mission for the hearts, it's never going to run because we, we don't have enough hearts in the system. So I think this alternate tier 7 mission we have to move over to share the one with the tier 8. And since these will all be on demand, we don't need level emitters on these and it shouldn't be affected by that. Alright, so I went ahead and set up some recipes for the tier 9 and 10. We didn't have the automatic functionality for these things before. And we also got the tier 7 dragon mission and the tier 8 in these large ones. I have also finished setting up the tier 4 microminer for dense ores. We can use these for diamonds and some redstone for rhodochrosite. So these have their outputs going to a drawer and we just have the request system here. This is not being sent automatically. The next medium microverse projector 
is going to be actually for this tier 4 mission that we haven't used before for infinity dust blocks. These are used for grains of infinity. I noticed our grains of infinity are getting very, very low, below 5,000. However, to send this mission, we do need the composition sensor, which means we first need to make the HV sensor. I don't think we're making this thing yet. And more crafters, some optical sensors, some stainless steel plates, and that's a very easy recipe to add for the composition sensor. I am going to downgrade this though, there's no reason to buffer 2,000 of these things. But yeah, then we can set up our recipe for the tier 4 grains mission, and we can configure this one just like the other one. I'm going to share this with the tier 5 boron mission. Well, I guess it's the ores mission, but yeah, I think this is more or less the only way to get boron. At least it's the easiest way in the late game. We also can get some ender pearls this way as well, and all of these things will just be output to some drawers. Pearls I think can go on a compacting drawer. Yeah, there's just going to be a lot of drawers here. <laughs> But I think most of the stuff we end up voiding anyway. At this stage of the game, we really have to target exactly what we need from the microminers. Storage upgrade them all, leave space at least for a void upgrade. And yeah, we void the beryllium, we void the sphalerite, we void the palladium. Bastnasite, we we can void whatever this thing is. <laughs> Don't think I've actually ever used that ore. Osmium, we can void. Uranium, we can void. Monocyte and molybdenite, we void. Oh, and oil sands. We don't need oil sands. you guys ever end up in that state of extreme concentration where you just, I don't know, you lose track of everything and... <laughs> Alright, so I managed to get these last two small microverse projectors set up, including some other stuff which we'll go over in a second, but this first one here is for the tier 3 microminer mission, primarily for exquisite emeralds. This is just being sent on demand, however we do actually use the exquisite emeralds to make crystal chips, and this is used I think in tier 5s. So it's a pretty important resource that we have, we may switch this over to being passive, I'm not sure yet. But the other one here, we can actually fill her for tier 2 missions, and we want to do these on demand since this is how we get our stellar creation data. And stellar creation is what we need for tier 9s. But if we're going to set up the missions passively, that means we have to craft the microminers passively. So if we come over here to our extended crafting area, beneath this sand pillar here, so I remember to filter it. I have also configured this little setup here, which is the same as the tier 7. We request all the items that we need for the tier 2 mission, although apparently we're not making diesel generators. Maybe it's just catching up to some buffers, I don't know, we'll see. But then yeah, we just have the limited item filler to supply exactly one recipe. Recipe package is doing the tier 2 mission. This is going to get packaged as soon as we get the diesel generator. There we go. <laughs> it's almost instant. Oh, and it's already put 120 packages in our AE system. Yeah, we have to request these in this interface. That's going to drop them into all of these tables. I think if we set the item conduits correctly here. Oh yeah, we're making tier 2s. Oh nice. <laughs> Yep, and the finished product should just go back to our EE system. We got a storage monitor on the front. Then we can add it to this interface on the small projector. So this is going to be the tier 2 mission for stellar creation. We also need ultra dense hydrogen. And the rocket fuel we're already given in a creative tank underneath. Let's plug all of this in and we should see this start to run any second now. We only get one output for this, so we only need the one drawer on this. Oh yeah, and set the robot arm settings correctly and import. How are you running? Yes, perfect, perfect. <laughs> Although maybe we want to switch this with a smaller output bus. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to put an LV output bus. We don't need to have the full LUV buffer on the output. There we go. And we're passively generating stellar creation data. Awesome. I do want to find out what's happening with these advanced field gens though. So yeah, as you can see, our crafter wall has filled up quite a bit. We got all of these spaces filled. In fact, we're on the last wall here. We may have to expand this out a bit further. But yeah, the diesel gens, they take all of these MV components... It looks like we're just not making motors fast enough, which is copper wire. I guess it's just the speed of this crafter, but it should be fine. We got some upgrades in there. It's going to fill some buffers eventually. Yeah, it's going to be perfectly fine. You guys want to see something absolutely insane? Look at this. So I, I might have mentioned earlier that we needed electrum foil. Maybe we should have built these closer together. But yeah, we have a fluid solidifier LUV doing electrum plates. That's all going to output to this chest. Oh my goodness, the speed is insane. <laughs> Let's put on some conveyor modules to transfer between the chests, just, just so that it's really rapid item transfer. That's going to go into 16 LEV cluster mills, and let's upgrade the drawer so we can actually see this thing, and it doesn't fill up immediately. Oh, look at this. 
<laughs> I think we get like four stacks at a time. Yeah, that's us on 5,000, 6,000, 7,000. Oh my goodness, that's insane. <laughs> It's insane and I love it. That's why I love PAs. All right, but one more thing. Since we got tier eights on passive, I have also filtered this recipe in here. This one is the only one that doesn't follow the same rule as the rest of these things. So because the tier eight mission requires two recipe packages, index zero and index one, this has to be split amongst two packagers, which apparently are not plugged in. Did I not plug this in? No, I guess not. Wait, it is plugged in. It should be plugged in. Maybe if we replace them. Okay, that was weird. I'm not sure what happened there. But yeah, this index one is marked as only the field generators at ZPM. The reason that we have two here, by the way, is just because this is more than nine items on the input, nine unique items. So field generators are limited item filtered in the left hand side, and all of the rest is limited item filtered in the right. And whenever we have less than, let's say eight tier eights, it's gonna emit a signal. This is gonna be extract with signal. And the rest should be more or less exactly the same. We request the recipe package here once it all packages itself up. Oh wait, did I miss an item here? I think I might have missed one of these things in the filters. Alright, 30 minutes of troubleshooting later. The problem turns out to be that I filtered in crystal matrix plating rather than the heavy plating, which is the reason it wasn't packaging itself. I literally tried everything. I rebuilt this whole thing and <laughs> turns out we just filtered things wrongly. Although we are missing warp engines, I we have to investigate that in a second. But yeah, the fuel generators end up on the right hand side, I need up switching sides, and everything else ends up in the left. That's going to make our two recipe packages, and we just send this into the unpackager. And we should see our tier 8 missions on passive. Wow. <laughs> yeah, now we just need warp engines to be able to make the rest. So because we're doing two different indexes and different packagers, we have to have separate level emitters here. This is based on the index 1, which is for the fuel generators only. This is the extra item that doesn't fit in the table. So this only works if we have b below four of these things, just so that we don't buffer too many field generators as the packages. Then the other issue that we have to take care of here is this unpackager is gonna just fill with these packages. So we have to add a limited item filler on the insert here, limited for only one of these things. Yeah, it's also gonna buffer it in its uh, send slot, I guess, is what this is. It's waiting for the index one to come. I think we'll need another one of those to set the filter as well. I wonder if we can craft some warp engines by hand. Yeah, there we go, and now we can set the filler. All right, so it's now been quite a few hours since I've started this episode, and I think we have enough chaos shards for our creative RF. I was able to send the tier nine mission and we have a tier 10 crafted here. Let's see if the auto mission ends up working in this microverse projector. Oh yeah, we have green lights. And if we check our recipe again for the RF source, we are only missing, I think, just chaos shards. Yeah, we're missing one tier eight mission. And I think just the heart of the universe at the bottom, which is currently in the microverse projector. So one more tier eight mission, and we need some patience for that projection to finish. Yeah, it's about halfway there. I have a feeling also this RF source is gonna take quite a while to craft as well. But you know what, while we wait on that thing, I think it's time for some demolition, some therapeutic demolition. Easy. What's not so easy though is all of these conduits because of how thin they are. It's not so easy to mine these things and I don't think destruction gadget works with these either. That should also be our heart of the universe finish. Let's see if the RF source is craftable. Oh my goodness, look at this. It's got 34 chaotic cores to craft though. That's probably going to be the biggest bottleneck, but we'll see. I mean this material, this is huge. <laughs> Oh, and we have a problem with emeraldic crystals. Uh, yeah, this is that setup down here that we have to rebuild still. Let's order like 40 manually. MV electric mores, oh no. <laughs> it wasn't supposed to end like this. I think it's all being used for these things. Let's, uh, let's turn this off right now. Yeah, it's still trying to catch up to the buffer on these drawers here. Okay, anything else gonna stop us here? Restonia crystals. <laughs> Oh, it's this thing down here. I don't know what's going on with this. I think it's something to do with the compacting drawers though, which is why I didn't want to put all of the ores from the start. A couple of you guys commented on about that actually. It's for this reason, because because when you have compacting drawers, Applied Energistics thinks that you have all of these slime plus all of these slime balls, when in reality that's not actually the case. It's just the way that they are compacted in the drawer. So I think that is what's going on over here. Okay, I fixed some buffers. Now this thing is craftable. Yeah, there we go. All right, back to demolition. <laughs> Okay, it's really hard to stop using this destruction gadget. I had to stop myself before I went too crazy here. <laughs> we still need ore processing and we still need that assembly line over there. And the turbines will help until we get this thing crafted. And speaking of getting this thing crafted, I didn't actually consider how big of a job this thing is. There is 900 wyvern cores to go. 
Yeah, somewhere around 60 solar panels, wyvern solar panels. And yeah, 82 draconic energy cores. Man, this is going to take... This is going to take hours. <laughs> like, I don't know, we have to start scaling some infrastructure. The question is, do we cancel this and start to build more injectors so that it goes faster? Or do we just leave it? I'm not actually sure, to be honest. And I would love to be able to say that we got our creative RF today, which we technically did. I mean, it's in the crafting screen, right? We just have to wait. <laughs> So I think we're going to wrap things up here today. Yeah, I'm going to try to get a few more things prepared and sped up before the next start of the next episode. But yeah, from me for now, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all soon for some more Nomi Factory.